Hi, little dog pounds. We're back to continue our exploration of heredity and genetics. And today's task, overall, we're going to look at inheritance patterns that involve entire chromosomes. In the last lecture, we looked at genes and, and how we can do um, Punnett squares and make crosses and follow different genes and different alleles and genotypes to look at possible offspring. But this time we're going to look at some ways that an entire chromosome can be implicated in inheritance patterns. We need to remind ourselves, of course, if you need someone to cuddle with, I'm always a fan of letting you know that Chromey the chromosome is available for you. For only $12, you can buy an entire set of chromosomes from whoever this is who sells Chromey the chromosome. I'd buy them if I could. Aren't they cute? But let's remind ourselves what exactly is a chromosome because it isn't that cute little plush. Like it looks like a little plush styrofoam thing that you packaging styrofoam. Or a Cheeto. It looks like a little stuffed Cheeto. In actuality, a chromosome is not a stuffed Cheeto. It's actually a strand of DNA. Wow, one strand of DNA, one molecule, wound around, what is that? You got it, dogs. It's a histone protein. And the histone proteins, we wind the DNA around those, and then the histone proteins wind kind of around each other, and we end up with this really coiled mess or knot or strand of DNA in a chromosome form. We don't have to look at our chromosomes as chromosomes. We can talk about them in terms of chromatin as well, but thinking about the tangle of string versus a, a nice little log of yarn, I find uh, DNA and heredity easier to think about when we think about it in terms of the, the log, the chromosome itself, especially for today's topics. So we're going to look again at a karyotype. Remember that that was just a picture of all the chromosomes in one human. And we're going to look at some um, things that we can uh, learn about an individual by looking at their karyotype. 